I bet you Dylan's bowl is almost glazed. It is. You're right. Yeah, it's looking You're right. right. Yeah. Wow. This is fantastic. The cheese so really is the, the extra comforting. thing on top. I'm going to make a warm, comforting chicken and three pepper stew. So here's our, our grid with all here's everything Here's your grid. As you can see, you probably, other than the tomatillos mm -hmm. and the poblanos, you probably have all the ingredients. You want to stir that up for me? Okay. Now, and then you, was that the uh, lime ju lemon it's juice? It's just lemon juice, the juice of one lemon with about mm -hmm. two pounds of boneless uh, chicken. Mm -hmm. I like to use thighs me because too. they have more flavor. Yep. And then you're going to let that marinate for about the time it takes you to chop up all the vegetables. Now, could you prep this ahead of time? Or? You could. You okay. could do it in the morning and leave it in the fridge. It'd okay. be fine. And then we're using tomatillos. Tomatillos right. are also in the nightshade family. Mm -hmm. They are an excellent thing to use in the winter. They're very prevalent in Mexican cooking. Sure. And then, basically, here you have bell peppers. Mm -hmm. Here are the poblano peppers, which are milder and dried apricots and uh, potatoes. Okay. And other than this, there's not much else that's gonna go into this. Mm -hmm. So I, as you know, love to use spices. So we're using right. fennel seeds, which you wanna fry in the oil before you add your aromatics. So, so that gives you a little extra flavor? Yeah, it flavors the oil, and then the oil will flavor the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So basically, these are the bell peppers and poblanos right. with the onion, and then after that cooks down for just a couple of minutes, all you're adding is garlic, mm -hmm. oregano, some salt, and freshly crushed, even with the back of a mallet. So you want big chunks of pepper. Of black pepper, that is your third pepper. Mm -hmm. And you can be a little more generous with that. I dry roasted that off fresh when they were whole in a pan for 90 seconds and then crushed them you know, just with the meat tenderizer. So that seems to be your tip, and then taking spices and either mm -hmm. toasting them or, or, or... You want to wake the flavor up. You know, people always ask me, what spices should we get? And I always say, you probably have all the spices mm -hmm. you need. Right. You just need to use them to greater benefit. Spices lay dormant in our pantry a long time, so you have to wake them up. And heating them up, gives you that beautiful aroma, releasing the oil and the flavonoids. Let's check in on our tasters downstairs. Guys, what do you think of Padma, it's insane. Well, like, how is it? We're so tank. happy. There's, There's so much oh, interest good. there. I mean, you got your olives and your tanginess. And that chicken, the chicken is off the chain. And you have parsley in your teeth. No, yeah. do I? <laughs> I guess they got it's cilantro. They, <laughs> they, they love it. They, they love okay. it. So well, you put in your tomatillos. And you put in the tomatillos and you put in three to four cups of water and let that break down. Mm -hmm. And it'll get nice and soupy. Once that happens, you're going to add your chicken. Right. You're going to add, here, stir that okay, up for sure. now. You you're going to add your potatoes. And here is what's going to give you that extra layering of beautiful, sweet, and sour flavor. Mm -hmm. Here's the potatoes. So it's a one-pot meal. You don't have to add rice or quinoa. That'll break down and add to the gravy. So that it kind of thickens up? Exactly. And then we're adding green olives. Any old Spanish or Italian green olives mm -hmm. and then dried apricots. That will give you a little sweetness. It'll give you a little briny, salty sourness. And once that cooks down, Al, look at how oh, beautiful wow, look at this that. looks. It is so easy to make. And so there's no other thickener or anything? Nothing, just... no, nothing. And you just want to cook this down for about 40 minutes so mm -hmm. it gets this consistency. And basically, this is great on a cold winter night. It's a crowd pleaser. I would make twice as much because you can freeze it oh, sure. beautifully. Mm -hmm. And then also, it'll be better the next day. I want you to try a hot plate of this. And you can give another squirt of lemon. Oh. And just, if you like sweetness. Mm -hmm. and, if, and by the way, don't be afraid of uh, dried fruit in your savory cooking. It will cook down. It won't be that right. sweet. But if you don't like fruit in your cooking, just add a pinch of honey oh. or sugar to balance out the brightness and spiky green of the peppers. This is amazing, guys. I mean, uh, is any, I bet you Dylan's bowl is almost clean. It is. You're right. right. It's looking <laughs> right. She's yeah. oh, good. She's That's showing his bowl is kind of good. <laughs> Here are all the ingredients that okay. you see here right. for Let's the take a dish. Look. Very easy. You can get tomatillos wherever you want. We're going to whiz all these ingredients. Avocado, cilantro, green mm. chilies, garlic. Okay. Yeah. All right. Blend it up. And so you can talk to me. That will whiz up. You can use this salsa, by the way, on its own as a green dipping sauce. It's just a green salsa. I great. better just test that right now. I love test it. Test it right salsa now. Verde. It's really yeah. good. The now, good too, but... I've also put in sesame seeds, you'll notice, as a thickening agent. It gives you a nice mm. nutty depth. And sesame seeds is something that mm. I know from Asian culture 
but has also, by the way, all these three liquids, lemon juice, olive oil, vinegar, goes in here. That's great. Wait, where um, did you put the sesame seeds? I, I put the lost. sesame seeds in okay. here, and I'm going to put them in here, too. Okay. So once those onions get glassy or translucent, about four to five minutes, you're going to put ground pork in there. And here's what it looks like. And as mm. soon as the ground pork loses its pinkness, you're going to add a shot of tequila. That's nice. going to tenderize it. The agave flavor is going to come out and give it another subtle flavor. If you no. have anything, you know, any block, like if you're blocked about using alcohol, don't use alcohol because we're going to put water in here. Okay. And then we're going to add this salsa. And the only spices which I put in here when the meat was cooking is sesame seeds, red chili flakes, cumin seeds, and Mexican oregano. Okay. That is it. So then you're going to pour this ready-made sauce. You want to make double of this sauce because it comes in handy for so many recipes. Well, I put it on everything. I you put it on do. eggs in the morning. Oh, it's delicious, delicious it on eggs. Though. And by the way, this recipe is much better the next day. So if you're going to go into labor soon, yes. make your husband make this so it's ready. You can right. freeze it. So once this cooks down, a lot of people will use canned beans, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. Canned beans tend to be a little softer, so add them toward the end of that half an okay. hour. Okay. I should mention, by the way, our tasters are downstairs. Don't give us the final verdict, but how did you like the tomatillo salsa? A it's plus. All, it's all unbelievable. It's a, ten. a plus. Okay. Okay. Can I a plus. <laughs> so you can see how easy this is. This is going to cook down in about half an hour, uh -huh. and it's going to look like this. That's beautiful. Like a chili. Yeah, it's, like a it's, chili bear it's beautiful. On a fall night, oh, like too. tonight, it's going to be beautiful. It's great for a game day. Everyone mm -hmm. can just sit around the TV with some bowls. I'm going to dress it. And you just want to squeeze a little, a little bit of lime juice. Yeah. yeah. Cilantro. We had this for dinner last night, actually. I'm going to have this for lunch today. A little secret. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to wrap little, some of this up. A little cheese, a little cheese on cheese. top. Yes. And I'd like both of you to try it. This is okay. hot. So I'm going to give you a spoon, okay. Carson. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to give you a spoon as well. I have another tasting portion here. Okay, great. Yeah. Guys downstairs, talk oh, to us. It's amazing. Licking it's the bowl so already. Good. Two thumbs up. Oh, really delicious. Is it good? Outstanding. Really wow. good. Really good. And if you if you want to do it, you can make this vegetarian all you have to do is swap the meat for beans you mm -hmm. can use any beans like pinto beans or just add the same weight of meat but in beans and it's totally vegetarian. I feel like it's pretty healthy too. I mean not yeah. 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 like a lot of butter. Guilt free, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so fresh. it's not that heavy. I I mean we keep this around all the time because it comes Does in it handy. Does it freeze well? It freezes beautifully and also as I said the bene seeds I put some in here too when I was cooking the meat to mm -hmm. toast that meat. I mean, to toast the seeds with the meat, and it gives you this nutty flavor. I rediscovered Sesame Street, the Sesame Street, Sesame, <laughs> Sesame <laughs> Seeds. <laughs> I rediscovered Sesame <laughs> Seeds in Charleston when we were filming yeah. it because it's a southern ingredient. They call it bene, and it's an African ingredient, and it has so much to do um, with that culture. And so it adds a richness. It's Sean Brock, who is a big chef in Charleston, actually makes hot sauce with sesame seeds. When I tasted it, it actually tasted like an Indian chutney. And so it, you know, re it brought back an old ingredient from my childhood and yeah. it's so southern. I taste a lot of this right here. A lot of that Mexican it's oregano. Gives it a little something and special. And Mexican oregano is different from Italian oregano. It's a but different can you get event. it at any you store? Can, you can get it at a good spice store. You know, I learned about all this when I was researching um, my book, The Encyclopedia of Spices. But I mean, if you don't get mm. Mexican oregano, please use regular Mediterranean oregano. It will be you fine mm -hmm. in this dish. Okay. Padma, this is delicious. This is excellent. Really, Isn't really it good. good? Yeah. Yeah, it's I really mean, they're good. making it in your commissary no, really for good. everybody who works Seriously, here. Seriously, and not intimidating. It's, it's so chef. easy. You they saw really me was. make it in front of you. Thank Use you so much. So today, in honor of Colorado, we're yeah. going to do shepherd's pie. Oh, that's fantastic. It's still cold in most of the country. So I'm basically just dicing a half inch dice of some potatoes, about two pounds of rest of potatoes. You're going to put those in an inch of water above the potatoes, salted water. Let that boil. What kind of potato are you using? Rest it. I'm okay. using rest it, and you want to cover it, boil it. Once it starts boiling, remove it, and then let it cook in a gentle boil for 10 minutes. Then you're going to drain it, and you're going to get this. And we're just making classic mashed potatoes. Okay, that's you're gonna add part of it. Yeah. Half a cup of milk. Half a stick of butter or four tablespoons. This is the healthy version. This is the healthy. By the way, if you wanted to do a vegan version, you could just leave out the milk and add olive oil instead of butter. Now, I want you, yeah. Carson, please. Emulsion blender? Emulsion blender. Right. Immersion blender. Immersion. To emulsify. Okay. I love this little tool. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen because 
makes all the cream no, no. soups. I know. Little elbow grease there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this seems shepherd's pie is one of those things that like, a lot of people don't make at home because they think it's just really hard to do. It's so easy to do, and so we have some here. Um, and if you have leftover mashed potatoes, you may need to make them a little more creamy. You can leave that there. Okay. Thank you. I just do it on cold. <laughs> That's Bob. okay. I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. So here we have a little canola oil. I'm sorry. So you whip the potatoes, let them sit on the side, yes. and now you have a yes, whole separate you pan. you want them creamier, and I'll tell you why in a second. What's down in here? Olive um, oil and some of these things? There's canola oil, yep. shallots, and red bell pepper. You want to cook that for about four or five minutes so that the shallots get a little translucent. I'm adding aromatics to that. Garlic and ginger for yeah. a little Asian twist on a British classic. And then to that, you're going to add your ground meat. We're using ground beef, about a pound and a half. But if you want to be healthier, you could do ground turkey. What's the classic shepherd's pie? Is it like it's lamb, lamb and, and beef? Yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to be vegetarian, like I've done it also with lentils, just boil brown lentils like you did with the potatoes, drain them and add them at the end. Do yeah. so you want to mash this down here? I'm going to let you I'll go do that. this Uncle way. Al's here too, hanging there. out. Do you like the shepherd's pie, Al? I, I mean, do like general. the shepherd's pie, but again, I always think hey, it's a lot of work, but this is pretty this simple. This is easy, yeah. and all I'm adding to this is some thyme and crushed red chilies. Boy, this is what I would have loved to have eaten last night in the Northeast. Oh, was know. going down. That's when right. it's cold, all That's I can right. think about is a good shepherd's Didn't pie. Order out We're also delivery. giving Mike this Guinness. a little bit of tartness with tomato. I used okay. about a quarter cup of tomato paste, which some hot water so that it's easier to yeah, you don't end up with just ground beef the no, tomato paste right. is an adhesive it keeps there's, it together there's also it's missing here but there's also some um worcester sauce which i'm just going to take from our grid uh -huh. isn't it good it's delicious so i'm just going to add a little bit about a tablespoon not right. too much that is are you cooking this fully yes i am you don't leave it under no, no, so no, we, no, okay no. so you cook that, it fully. you cook it you cover it you can cook it for about 10 to 12 minutes and just mix and taste for salt. And is this a lasagna sort of layering process? It's like a parfait, a single layer of parfait. Okay. And the reason you want to get the um, potatoes a little looser, a little creamier, is because you want to spread them evenly. Use the back of a spoon to spread both, but use different spoons, obviously, for the meat and the potatoes. And what's your ratio of meat to potatoes? About the same? It looks uh, well, like about, about half the for both. same. Yeah, I use, see what I did there? Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. So um, just be gentle about it. But you, I like to fill the casserole dish just under half with meat and then um, to almost the top or close to the top. See, I would think at potatoes. this point you'd be done. I would throw this in the oven and wait for the potato to maybe but no. brown up a little oh. bit. But no, but you no. Want to more. Seal, also seal the corner so it doesn't You want to be a real top chef, Al. That's right. You're going this to top it. This is my right. own twist, just to make it a little more decadent. What do you got there? This is pepper jack cheese. Oh, holy moly. Never seen spicier. that before. I'll have another pint, you, please. I know, honestly. If you didn't like it so spicy, you could just use regular jack cheese. Put this in a 375 oven for 20 minutes. Cover it for most raise of the time. It and then two or three minutes before, take the tin foil off, and this is what you're left wow, with. Wow, that is beautiful. Thank you. Isn't it It almost yummy? looks like a fluffy. It is. What makes it so fluffy? It's the potatoes, man. Wow, it's a good potato. Yeah, here. Um, who's going to win tonight? Um, I can't tell oh, you because okay. then I'll have to give you my daughter as <laughs> payment to NBC. How's your daughter? She's great. She's great. She um, she's very excited for the finale. She wants to stay up. What are you guys gonna do? You gonna have a little shepherd's pie and do a finale? Party? We had it for dinner last night because I make this Perfect. all the time, but I wanted to jog my memory. And I'm glad that the messiest thing I did was the serving. What do you think, Al? That's it's delicious. Amazing. Is it yummy? Wow! This is fantastic. The cheese really so is the, the extra comforting. thing on top. today fans thanks for checking out our youtube channel subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews show highlights and digital exclusives